I'm going to show in a second, really simple to be able to take existing Lightning components and surface them directly into Visual Course. You'll be able to do any sort of communication between the two, either on the client if you wanted to do that, or handle it all inside of Lightning 2 using Visual Course as your container. Um, but this will allow you, as you're making that migration, not all Visual Force pages make sense to turn into Lightning components, so you might still want to use Visual Force, but this will help you um, port Visual Force pages into Lightning components, use Lightning components inside of Salesforce Classic, whatever your use case may be, there are quite a few. So let's take a look at what this looks like inside of my developer org. All right, so here I am in my um, recruiting app. You can see I'm in recruiting right here. Um, let's take a look at what this would look like inside of Salesforce One. I want to first show you my Lightning tab. So for anyone who has tried using the one slash one dot app as of winter, um, you may notice that it takes you to Lightning Experience instead of Salesforce One. And this is something that can be mitigated simply by changing the user agent. So that'll still allow you to test Salesforce One inside of the browser if you're trying to do any sort of custom development debugging. So I'm in Lightning Experience right now, but by inspecting the element and then changing the user agent to, sorry, I think that GoToWebinar is making my uh, computer a little bit slower. I'm going to change this to an iPhone 6 and then refresh the browser. Uh, it should, instead of being in Lightning Experience, show me in what the Salesforce One app would look like. So I can go to my Candidates tab, and this tab is just a Lightning component tab. I can scroll through these different uh, candidates, and if I were to click on their name, it would take me to their uh, contact record, but maintain that navigation breadcrumb to be able to go back. Now what would this look like inside of Classic? Well, if I go to the Job Positions tab, and click on a given job, I can click on this uh, detail page button at the top, and you'll notice from the URL as it's loading, this is a Visual Force page. But it's the exact same component that we were looking at before, and when I click on this name, it then takes me into Classic. And so this is the exact same component used in both places. How did we actually do this in Visual Force? So if I open up the developer console, I'm going to open up that Visual Force page. So I have my candidate carousel page. Just a standard Visual Force page. I removed um, you know, header and sidebar style sheets. The first thing relevant to Lightning Experience or Lightning Out is this Apex Include Lightning standard uh, component. That's going to include all the resources necessary to do Lightning Out. I also have some CSS here so that that component takes up the full screen. I have this div, which doesn't have anything in it when the page loads, but that's going to be where once the component is rendered, it's going to be put into that DOM element. Um, this is what you would do if you were, say, trying to use the UI theme. Um, I've commented it out because I'm in a winter, winter org at the moment, um, but in spring, what you can do is um, use this code to render specific areas of your UI. Um, this is that user UI theme variable I mentioned um, that's uh, for detecting exactly what app context you're viewing this page from. So if you're classic, you can create a UI specific to the classic theme or Salesforce One or Lightning Experience. Um, or if you don't want to use this global user UI theme variable from Visual Force, you can use what's been traditionally uh, recommended since Salesforce One came out, which is detecting the S-Force object. And so if this S-Force object exists, that means you're in one of the Lightning Experience, either the Lightning Experience or Salesforce One. If it's not, then you're in Salesforce Classic. But actually using that Lightning component is just a little bit of code. So once I've detected where I'm viewing this component from, all I need to do is declare the component that I want to use in the page. Now I do have this one app, which essentially is just declaring the dependencies necessary for me to be able to load these components. Think of it as a bridge telling my page, hey, these are the components that are allowed to be on this page. So if I open up that app, you'll see it's really simple. There's no markup. It's just declaring that one dependency of that component for the candidate's carousel and also extending Lightning out. But this is globally available. If you didn't have this, um, the Visual Force page would get a 404 error when you're referencing the component. Now, 
going back to the page, all I'm doing after I've declared that app that has those dependencies on it, then I can create the component itself. And so the first thing that I do is put the name of the component that I'm trying to use on my page. You can pass in any parameters, which essentially fill the attributes on your component. Uh, in this case, I'm sending in the user context, which is the container that I'm viewing it from. Then you specify the DOM element that you're trying to populate with this component. So in this case, I'm doing that candidate carousel div up here. And then finally, you have a callback function, which can be used to be able to set more values or maybe do more DOM manipulation, whatever you might want to do after the component actually loads. But um, in this case, I'm not doing anything except log logging that it was created to the console. So let's take a look. Uh, or, so that's basically it. You know, that's really simple. I have my simple lightning component. It only takes a few lines of code to put it on the page. Um, and then there you go.